Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the May 2011 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they start off by telling us that Chris Luda and Sons maintains both a three column cash book and a petty cash book. The petty cash account should start with $400 in hand every month. All payments for office supplies and cleaning expenses are recorded in the Petty Cash Book. Okay, that's some good information. Let's take a look at the opening balances, shall we? The balances at April 1st, 2011 were as follows. Cash, $850. Bank, $4,200. Petty Cash, $75. Okay, I thought it was $400. All right. Now, what are they telling us? During the month of April, the following transactions were recorded in the books as indicated. Okay. Okay, so they give us this long list of transactions for April 2011 and they have some things here that have dollars and cents. Now those items are, are the ones that are going to be going in a petty cash book. So we have two things to do. We have a cash book to do and a petty cash book to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through the items and deal with the cash book first and then we are going to deal with the petty cash book after. All right, so the first thing I want to do is put in the opening balances. All right. So as indicated by the question, we're seeing the opening balances for cash and bank are 850 and 4200 respectively. So of course, as assets, they are going to have balances brought down on the debit side. So on the, on the debit side, on the cash column, you're going to see 850 and under the bank column, you're going to see 4200. Okay, on the 1st of April, it said restored impressed by cash to petty cash book. Okay, so the impressed amount is the $400 that the question mentioned to us earlier on. Now the petty cash book has a balance currently of $75. So if it only has 75, to restore the impressed amount, we have to put it back up to 400. To go from 75 to 400, that's a difference of $325. And that's going to come out of cash, right? So you're going to see petty cash. So on the credit side, right, you're going to see petty cash as the particulars and $325 coming out of cash, right? Now, of course, it's on the credit side because cash is an asset. We're taking money out of cash to put into petty cash. So the cash item is decreasing. Since cash is an asset and it's decreasing, we have to record that decrease on the credit side of the asset account, right? And the details or particulars say petty cash. Now, a, a very common misconception that people have, a lot of students, is that if you write petty cash on the credit side here, you are crediting petty cash. No, no, and for the last time, no. This, I, this entry here is not a credit to petty cash. This is an entry or a credit to the cash book. And the other account affected or the particulars where the money went, it went to petty cash. And in the petty cash book, you're going to see it as a debit. But we'll get back to that. Let's move on to the next transaction. So on the 6th, they paid wages of $2,100 by check. So check means bank was affected. If we're paying wages, it means money is coming out of bank, which means bank is decreasing. Since bank is an asset and it's decreasing, we're going to have to credit the bank account. So on the credit side, under the bank column, you're going to see that item of 2100 there. And what did we pay? We paid wages on the 6th of April. So again, this is not a credit to wages. It's a credit to the cash book and wages is what we are paying. Okay, next, let's take a look again. It says on the 6th now, we received cash of 1900 from P. Rice to settle amount of 2000 Now, if you receive 1900 to settle an amount of 2000 it means that P. Rice no longer owes us any money. But 1900 is not 2000 There's a difference of $100 there. What accounts for that $100? Well, if we're accepting 1900 to settle 2000 it means that we are allowing P. Rice a discount of $100. Now, if we are receiving money, receiving cash, cash is an asset. If we're receiving cash, it means cash is increasing. To record an increase in an asset, an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So on the debit side, you're going to see that entry being put. So we're going to see that here. On the 7th of April, from P. Rice, we got $1,900 in cash and we allowed a $100 discount. Okay. Next, it says on the 9th, we have postage stamps at a cost of $50.10, mop and room $34.60. That's petty cash, so let's move on. On the 11th, we also have another petty cash item by copying paper at a cost of $40.80. On the 15th, we have another petty cash item, cleaning supplies, $25.50, stable to stable machine, $31.20. We're going again. On the 16th, now, all right, so deposited $1,200 cash into the bank. This is a contra entry because it's affecting both cash 
and bank at the same time. Money is being transferred from one to the next. So if we put cash into the bank, bank is going to increase. For bank to increase, we have to enter that on the debit side. Why? Because bank is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So under the bank column on the debit side, you're going to see 1200 That's the amount of cash being put in. And you're seeing folio, and you're going to see a C there. That C in the case that it's a contra entry. Right? A contra entry means that it also affects the other side of the cash book at the same time. Now, money came from cash. We took cash and put it in the bank. Just like on the first, we took cash and put it in petty cash and cash decreased. So the same logic applies here. We're taking money out of cash, which means it's decreasing. Cash is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So on the credit side on the cash, you are seeing 1200 and it's saying that it went to bank. And you're also seeing a C in the folio column to indicate that it's a contra entry. Right. So again, this is not a credit to bank. This is a credit to the cash book and it's under the cash column. So it means it's a credit to cash. The bank is where the money went. The particulars is where the money went. All right. So also on the 16th, it says S. John paid his debt of $1,000 by check, less 5% discount. So if S. John paid us by check, it means we are receiving a check, which means bank is going up. And to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Now, 5% discount. That means we have to take 5% of 1000 which is $50, and subtract it from the 1000 because discounts reduce the amount of money being paid or received. So we're going to see that here. So we're going to see on the bank, right, 950 being actually received and the discount allowed being $50. And the money came from S. John. And if you want, you can also put a date there. Okay, next, on the 18th, Chris Luder, owner, withdrew 500 in cash for private expenses. So whenever the owner withdraws any resource for private use, that's drawings. So if it's taking cash out of the business, cash is decreasing. Cash is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're going to see that here. 500 on the credit side under the cash account and the details say, or the particulars say drawings, as in that's where the money went. So again, it's not a credit to drawings, it's a credit to the cash book and to cash specifically. Okay, the, 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 this, this word here says where the money went, or what was paid. All right, next we have on the 22nd envelopes of 6330, that's going to be in petty cash. The 26th, we have paid debt 2900 to K Band Enterprise by check, less 2% discount. So we have to find 2% of 2900, which is $58. We're going to subtract it, which gives us 2842, right? And that goes to K band. Now we're paying by check, which means bank is being used. So if we are paying somebody back, it means our bank account is coming down if we're paying by check. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So we're going to go on the credit side under the bank column and we're going to put the 2842, which is the 2900 minus the discount of 58. And of course, who are we paying? We're paying K band enterprises. Okay. Next, we have the cleaner's wages, 128.30, that's a petty cash item. And the last item we have, it says, S. John's check received on April 16th was returned, marked return to draw. Now, what that means is that the check bounced. In other words, S. John did not have enough money in his or her account. And as a, and as, as a result, the bank could not get the money for us. So they sent us back the check and say, hey, take this, go back to your friend and tell them, hey, you didn't have enough money in your account to pay me with a check, sort me out, please, and thank you. So when we initially got the check from S. John, that would have been on the 16th, and it would have gone on the debit side. So what that means is that we now have to reverse that. So we have to go on the credit side, and we have to enter 950 under the bank column, right? So we're basically unreceiving the money, right? So S. John NSF check, right? So those are all the items that go in the cash book. Okay, time to balance off. So for cash, we'll add up the total items on the credit side, add up the total on the debit side. The debit side is going to have more, so clearly the balance is going to be carried down from this side. Bank, will you add up the items on the credit debit side, sorry, then add up the items on the, the credit side, and then you are going to subtract. And both of these have credit balance, sorry, balances carried down from the credit side. And of course, that means they're going to be brought down on the debit side like this, right? Bank and cash are both assets. Assets have debit balances. Now the totals, all right, are going to look like that, right? Now the discount columns are not balanced off against each other. Eh? 
they are simply totaled and transferred to their respective accounts in the general ledger. Okay, so let's go back through that list of transactions and deal with the petty cash book. Okay, so this was the format that came with the paper itself. You'll notice there's no folio column and there's no voucher number column. So we'll just use it as it is, all right? Don't feel like you have to draw in those columns. I think that's unnecessary. So the first thing we're gonna put in is the balance, which was $75, right? So the, that goes on the, well, quote unquote debit side here, all right? Balance brought down, April 1st, $75. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna restore the impressed amount to the petty cash book. So remember the question told us that the, the petty cash book had an impressed amount of $400. If we currently have $75 in, we need $325 more dollars to bring it back up to $400, which if you remember was the first item apart from the balance in the cash book we did previously. Okay, the first set of purchases or expenses um, we have here on the 9th, right? Purchase posted stamps, $50.10. That's clearly office expenses. And mop on room, $34.60. That's clearly cleaning expenses. So we're going to put the postage stamps and then the mop on broom, right? So, of course, please note that you have a separate column for office and for cleaning. And the total is a column itself, right? So we'll see why that is done a bit later. Okay, next on the 11th, the very next day, we have bought copying paper at $40.80. That's clearly an office expense. I don't think we use copying paper to clean, right? On the 15th now, we have bought cleaning supplies at $22.50 and staples for staple machine at $31.20. So that's cleaning and office respectively, right? Cleaning supplies, staples for staple machine. Then we have to go quite a way down and we have on the 22nd, we bought envelopes at $63.30. So we're going to put that in as well. And then I'm seeing we have cleaners wages of $128.30. So that's going to come here, right? So now what we do is we add up the three columns going down, right? So that's going to give us a total of 373.80. That's all the expenses. Office made up 185.40 of that and cleaning made up 188.40 of that. So again, if you add going down and add going across, you're supposed to get the same 373.80, right? Now, when we spend that out of the 400, we're going to have what's that? 26.20 left. So we're going to have a balance carried down 2620 and of course our totals on both the debit and credit side or in the two columns the in column and the out column are going to be equal at 400 dollars let's take a look at the last part of the question okay so it's saying to post the totals of the office supplies and cleaning expenses columns in the appropriate ledger so i feel like they meant the appropriate ledger accounts so remember a ledger is simply a book of t accounts Right? In this day and age, you probably wouldn't have books, you'd probably have folders on a computer. The office supplies account will have the total of 185.40 put on the debit side because office supplies is an expense and expenses have de well, are debited, right? So the balance is going to be carried down and of course you could bring it down if you want and of course on the debit side because expenses have debit balances. Similarly, for the cleaning expenses account, the total there of 188.40 is just simply transferred to the debit side. The credit side is just used to show the balance carried down. We're going to total up and then bring the balance down here. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the May 2011 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website for some useful free PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.